Hello and welcome back to the course. Today we'll be updating our player to use the state machine that we talked about in the previous video. This may be a long video so make sure to take plenty of breaks so you can absorb what is going on. Also make sure to take plenty of notes and of course ask away if you have any issues or questions. Now let's actually dive into this and just start creating our better player controller. So some of the first things we're actually going to be doing here is reworking our player a little bit by just adding an extra two, like a couple of nodes to our player tree to make this a bit more easy to view. So what we're going to do is go to our player entity. We're going to hit Control A to add. And we're going to add a node 2D. This first node 2D we're going to call the handler container. There we go. And we are going to move everything from the input handler down to the collection handler or yeah, down to the collection handler. So highlight all of those and we're going to move all of those into the handler container. Now, if I hit save and I hit play, we're going to run into some issues, specifically non-existent functions. And that is because we need to now update all of our on readies. So we don't need to update the one for the sprite because that's always in the same place, but we do need to update the input movement, jump, flip and gravity handler. So I'm going to delete all of those. Now I'm going to go through left click, control drop like so, typecast it as what it is. So it's as a input handler. Now we'll do the rest for the movement, the jump, the flip, the gravity. And I can add the health and death handler, but they're not actually used in this script at all. So we won't need to do that. So now we typecast these as what they are. So movement handler, jump handler, flip handler, and finally the gravity handler. Done. Now I hit control S and save. Replay the game. Everything is running. We can collect coins, go make sure our health drops. Yeah, make sure everything is running fine. Now, if you run into an issue where when you go and run over the coin, you do not get a coin increase, or when you get hit by a monster, you don't take damage, make sure that you're actually using a node 2D. If you're just using a node, that doesn't have any real physics interactions, so it will start to just ignore the rest of these handlers. But if you've used a node 2D, it should work fine. So with that done, let's go back to the player entity again. Hit control A and add. We'll add another node 2D. This one is going to be called the state machine container. Now this node isn't actually entirely necessary, so you can do this if you want to. And what we'll do is put all of our state machine stuff inside of this, or you don't have to, and you can just leave the state machine to be its own thing, which is more than likely what I'm going to do. But yes, the only reason I'm actually doing this is because we've got a lot of handlers in here and having to scroll through or look through the list entirely is kind of annoying. So we can just collapse that and be done with it and be happy. Now let's actually move on to creating our state machines. To do this, we're going to go down into our file system into where it says scenes. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this state machine. In here, we're going to create a script. This one is just going to be called the state machine. We can call this the finite state machine. That is actually the more correct uh, kind of word for what this is, a finite state machine. So we can name it finite state machine with a capital F, S and M. Then hit create. We'll go give it its code real quick as well. So we're going to want to give this a class name because things are going to need to reference this. So give it a class name of finite state machine. Keep it extending a node so we can actually instantiate the script because that's all we're doing. We're just creating a script and we'll instantiate it later. It's going to need an exported variable for the state that it is currently in. So current underscore state and it will be of type something. So right now I'm just going to make this uh, of type node because we don't have the type that it needs to be set or created yet. So I'm going to type it or typecast it as a node and then set it equal to null. Now let's go and create a ready function right in pass for now. Now we just need to go through the basic state machine logic. Now this might be moving a bit fast and if it is I really urge you to go back and look at the previous video. It kind of went through how this works and a rough explanation of what we're doing here. But the current state or the state in general is going to be what our characters, what our char uh, character is currently doing. Is it walking? If it is, then it's in a walking state. The state machine is just the brain, I guess, that controls the switching back and forth between current state and next state. So that in mind, let's actually go and create a function 
and we'll call this change underscore state. It's going to need a new underscore state passed into it, and that will be of type something specific, but it won't be node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write pass. I'm going to leave node, write pass, and leave it as, uh, as that for now. You can add a void return type to this because it doesn't actually need to return anything. Now, what I'm going to do so we can remove this node and stuff within our script, because I hate having uh, having to go back after we've done it all and then change certain things, is we'll go down to our state machine folder. We'll right click, create a new folder, and this one will be called states. And then inside of that states folder, we'll create a new script and it will just be called state with a capital S. And now we can go through, open up state, give it a class underscore name of state. And we'll leave the code in state as it is for now. All this allows us to do is actually use the class name state in our finite state machine. So. Current state will be uh, needing a state variable like so, and the change state, new state, the new state will also need to be a state type like so. Now that we've uh, renamed the variables to state, we can actually go back into our state machine. We're kind of doing this uh, pieces at a time to make sure it makes sense. We're going to need to give this a signal of state underscore finish. This is, uh, we won't be using the state finished signal that often, We'll just be using uh, a custom signal that we use. It's just nice to have the signal. So when we glance back at this, we can go, ah, it needs signals for when the state finishes and what it can do. What I usually end up doing is calling this state move underscore two, because this tells me a little bit clearer that what I'm doing with these signals is moving into another state. So let's add some new states to this. This will be the funk enter underscore state. Now you can, if you want to privatize these states by putting an underscore here, we don't need to do that. So we're just going to use func enter state. We will give it no parameters and a void return type. And then we can just write pass because these functions in the original defined state class here don't actually need to do anything. They don't need to have anything in them. These are just here for uh, inheritance sake mostly. So we'll do one more for exit underscore state. Once again, give it a void return type and then write pass. And that is our entire state or base state version set up. So we can go back to the finite state machine that we are setting up. Then under change state, we can write if current state is, is of type state, if it is, we then want to go current state dot, and we want to call the exit state function on that old state, because that's what change exit do. So we need to actually call the exit state. And then outside of this if loop, we need to go new state and call the enter state function that we just set up. And then we just need to set the current state equal to the new state. That way we keep track of what our current state is. This will be very useful for many different reasons. One of them, of course, being it needs it to function. And the other reason is for debugging purposes, we'll be putting a lot of use to that in the next episode. But for now, this is the state machine set up and actually ready to go. To give you a quick idea and understanding of what it's doing is it's going, okay, is the current state equal to the type state? Okay, it is. So if it is, we want to hit the current state or make the current state use its exit state functionality. Now the exit state functionality will be defined. And what that will do is go exit state, do something specific. So we need to do something in the exit state function. We haven't uh, set up the exit state yet. And that's one of the best parts about this is we'll be able to kind of as we go, depending on what state's doing what. And this gives us a lot of control over what we're doing when we enter and exit states. And it's the same thing for the enter state function. Do we need to toggle something on? Do we need to change a variable of some sort? If so, on enter state, we can do that. And then we're just setting current state equal to new state. And that's it. That allows us to just keep track of the current state that we are in. So that is the finite state machine and the state set up. Now, all we have to do is 
well actually what I'm going to do is create a new script here. Now this is a big thing. I need to go back to my state machine and I need to grab this class name of finite state machine and I need to hit control C and copy it. Now the reason we're doing this is just to make sure we avoid any typos because what we're going to do in the state machine folder we're going to create a new script and where it says inherits we're going to paste the finite state machine class name that we just copied and then the script itself will be called the player state machine. Now we're inheriting, what we're actually doing here is creating an inherited state machine specifically for the player. And that's because the player state machine is going to need to have a few variables that we want to make sure it has access to. So it can set the rest of the states in the state machine to have certain things. And separating it like this allows us to have multiple different types of state machines that we can use for well, anything. We can have an enemy state machine, a camera state machine. I actually like to use camera state machines quite often uh, in my 3D projects, which is very useful. And that is the thing with this. It will transfer to 3D if you want to do 3D. So player state machine is its name. It's inheriting from finite state machine. If I click create, double click on it and you'll see extends finite state machine. Now we're going to give this a class underscore name of player state machine. There we go. Hit Control S and save. Now I'm going to go back up to the finite state machine and I'm actually going to copy the ready function and the change state function. I'm going to throw that into the player state machine here. Now you don't actually need to do this, right? This already actually has the change state and the ready function and all that predefined, but and we're already inheriting from it. Now I do this so when I want to go, okay, if I'm in my player, because the player will have access to the player specific state machine, if I want to remember what's happening in the player state machine, I can just control left click once, it'll take me directly to the player state machine and I can see what's in here. I don't have to go all the way back to the finite state machine to do it. Now, with that done, let's add an exported variable for the player underscore entity, because this is going to, of course, need access to our player. So call it the player entity or typecast it as a player entity, set it equal to null. And now in the, did I? I did not, okay. We need to call change state in the uh, ready function up here. And we need to just pass through current state. This will uh, pretty much make it so it will toggle that first state and actually set it so that is equal to the current state. It's, it's just a thing, it gets it running. It's like turning the key to an engine, it gets it starting up. And we'll do the same thing in the player state machine. So change state to current state, and there we go. Now with that done, I'm going to create a new function. Now this is uh, the, what I like to call lazy efficient way of setting specific things up. This is going to be called set underscore children. And then I'm going to give it void parameters or no parameters and void return type. Why is this lazy? Well, one thing you're going to realize very often is every player specific state is going to need access to the player entity. That's a bit of a pain because it means you're going to need to remember through five different states, a very small basic, five different states to set the player entity every single time. Creating this function, we don't need to. So what I can do is go for I in get underscore children. So we're getting all of the children. Then I need to go if I is, we'll call it state for now, I dot player entity equals player underscore entity. Now, this is going to cause a little bit of an issue because one, states don't have a player entity set in them, which means this variable will just cause an error. So we're not going to call this just yet. Instead, what we're going to do is at the ready function, at the very top of the ready function to be very specific, we're going to call set children, hit control S and save. And now we're going to create a what I, what I like to call is the base player state. This is what all player related states will inherit from. 
Now to do that, under states here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this player states. There's a lot of inheritance that goes on in this, by the way. Now I'm going to create a new script inside that player states folder. I'm going to call it base player state. And it's going to inherit from the state script. So I can hit create. Now I can go into here, base player state. It extends the class underscore name of player, geez, player state. There we go. And now we just need to give it access to something. And what we're going to give it access to is the player underscore entity of type player entity, and then set it equal to null. Hit control S and save. So what we can do now is come back to the player state machine. And where it says if I is state, we can actually change this to if I is player state, set eyes dot player entity equal to player entity because player states will always have the player entity inside of it. And this is just a really quick and efficient way of going, okay, I only have to ever set my player entity once. After that, it will just do what it wants to. Now, one issue with this is depending on how you order things, it can cause some issues in a order of operations kind of manner. But if when you kind of know how to look out for those, what will usually happen is it'll go player entity is null. Even though technically it shouldn't be, it's just an order of operations thing. So if you have any crashes like that, go check how you are running functions and in what order you're running your functions in to make sure things are set correctly. And we'll probably run into that error once or twice. So with our finite state machine, our player state machine, our state and our base player state sorted, we can now start moving on to our actual states themselves. So to do this, what we're going to do is we are going to go into player states. We're going to create a new script again. It's going to inherit from the player there you go. from player state and this state is going to be called the player walk state hit create go and open it up now i'm going to give this the class underscore name class names are a very very specific thing we actually need to do with all these states it's makes it a lot easier to do certain things so we'll give this the player walk state class name now we're going to need two signals so the first signal will be enter underscore idle underscore state because we're going to have an idle state and the next signal will be the enter underscore jump underscore state and we'll go one further and do enter underscore full underscore state this is kind of how your signals will be changing quite often, is depending on what criteria is met, it will emit a certain signal. So technically, we don't need the enter full state signal. So I can actually call that off for now. We can just use the idle and jump state. And I'll explain why when we actually get to those. Actually, I can explain why now. When we are idle, meaning we are not pressing any buttons, we are not doing anything, we are going to be going, okay, we're no longer walking. Emit the idle state signal. The state machine will go, oh, okay, you want to go to idle state. Let's rotate you from walk state to idle state. Let's run the exit state function, do what you need to do, and then run the enter state function on the idle state to do what you need to do. And in those functions, we'll probably be playing animations and things. So it gets those animations flowing as well. Now, the jump state... This is kind of why I said we don't need a full state at the, uh, or don't need access to it, the full state from the walk state. When we press space, we are going into the jump state. The other thing we can do is go, okay, instead of when we press space or when we, you know, actually jump, we can go, if our y velocity is not equal to a vector 2.0, or just y velocity is not equal to zero in general, we are either in the jump or full state. At that point, we can just say, okay, go to the jump state. If we're falling, we're not in the jump state. And that's because the jump state will also have a signal that goes, if my Y velocity is basically going down, then we're in the full state and it will just auto cycle through to the full state. That's a lazier way of doing it. You can add a signal for full state to basically say, if I'm going down, I'm in the falling state. But yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out as we get to it. 
So let's add a func underscore already so we can get access to our ready function. We're going to need to have the enter underscore state function as well. There we go. Uh, type pass in there and we're going to need the func underscore exit underscore state as well. As we go through creating these states, you're going to start to fall into this kind of workflow with these. They are very simple setup. You go, okay, new state, give it a class name, uh, give it the signals that you know it's going to end up needing. Like you can plan this out beforehand so you, you know it wants to go into the idle and jump state. Then you just need access to the ready, the enter and the exit state function. And then finally the func underscore physics process function. And that's it. This is your entire state logic ready. You just need to fill these boxes in. So we'll start from top to bottom. When we enter the ready state, or when we fire the ready signal, we actually want to go and set our physics process to false. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to say, do not run anything under the physics process here. Don't do anything at all because we don't want any of the code in the physics process to run. Now, this actually turns the state off entirely. It doesn't run any code, it doesn't do anything. And that means when we enter the state, we're actually going to want to set our physics process to true. So we can actually start doing things within the physics process. And then when we exit the state, we want to set our physics process once again back to false. So when we first set up, if this is not the state we are in, set it to false. If we enter this state or this is the state that we are currently entering into, set it to true so we can do things. And if we are exiting, set it to false. And that is also why this cyclic function here or our cycling through the state here is very useful. Because what it does is it fires the exit state and then it fires the enter state on the current state, which is whichever one we have set it to start with which will then go, okay, physics process off. Okay, ne never mind. turn it back on and go from there. Now, with the state machine itself, there are a few things we want to do, or with the uh, player walk state, there are a few things we want to do. The first thing we're going to want to do is actually get our character, give our character the ability to walk and move, right? Now, as you see here, we don't have access to the player entity. Well, we actually do. If I type PL, you'll see the player entity variable actually pops up and that's because we're inheriting from it. Just because it doesn't show it doesn't mean we don't have it. So I can call the player entity. I can even go in even further and grab the movement handler from the player entity. And then I can call that dot handle movement function. And because this is a function we've defined, we just need to have the character body, the input direction and a delta. So what we're going to write is for the character body is we're going to just write player entity for the input direction, we'll call the player entity dot input handler dot handle movement input. And then for delta, we can just simply pass through delta. Now you can see this is a very, very, very long line of uh, like just a very long thing in general. And you see these two lines here. These are basically the, hey, don't go past these. Otherwise it starts to look kind of not great. Basically this zone is your like, this zone is fine. This is the, hey, it's starting to look a bit long and going past this line is like, hey, okay, it's too long, do something about it. Now to do something about it, you can actually just do a, uh, it's one of the slashes if memory serves, like that. And it, show, it shouldn't show any issue. So we can kind of collapse all of this down to one specific line. Personally, I don't actually mind having this uh, as one just really big line because yeah, you have to scroll through it, but to me, it's not that big of a deal. So you could just use a slash and put it to a different line if you really want to. For me, I'm not really too bothered about it. I don't need to do that for now. Now that we have our movement being handled, it's we're doing something with our movement. What we now need to decide is how we're going to be like exiting the state, what we're going to be doing. Well, Simply put, we're going to do some if checks. We're going to go if the player entity dot input handler dot handle movement input is equal to vector two dot zero. We want to do something. Well, 
because of how our handle input actually returns a vector, we need to make sure it's zero, which means if we're not doing anything, we want to go and omit that enter idle state signal. So enter idle state dot emit. And then we can uh, we can even put a return state in here just in case, but likelihood is this will, the minute or the second, the frame that this gets emitted, it will then go into the exit state functionality. And then that's kind of it goes into the exit state functionality, immediately sets process to false. It doesn't need to do anything. So the return statement, not technically necessary. We can also do one more check for entering or entering the jump state. So uh, let's see if you can actually like pause the video for a second, go and see if you can figure out what the check would be for the jump state or for entering the jump state. Uh, it's to do with the input handler. So give it a second, go do that. I'm going to now show you how to do that. So we want to call the player handler and then call the input handler. So player entity dot input handler dot handle jump input. And then we want to check if that is true. And if it is, we want to enter jump state dot emit. And that is literally nearly, nearly, nearly the whole physics process or the whole walk state uh, handled. This player entity movement handler handle movement line at the very top here, I'm going to copy that. And I'm actually going to go and throw that into our enter state function. And it'll uh, kind of freak out because delta isn't a thing here. We're just going to pass through zero instead of delta. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because sometimes with certain things, if you enter the state, it can freeze. You're like a character could stop walking or stop doing something. So always kind of make sure your movement is being handled in this way. Passing in zero instead of delta is also okay because this is for like a frame. It won't make that big of a deal or much of a difference. Now I can hit control S and save. And that is our walk state handled. Now we're going to do one more state and that is the player idle state before we start testing things and toying around with things. So in the player states, we'll once again create a new script. It's going to inherit from the player state. It will be the idle or player idle state, sorry. And then you get player idle state, hit create. Go back to the state real quick. So one thing that I like to do is you can either go to state or you can just go back into your like walk state and then you can copy the ready enter exit state functions. Go into your idle state that you just opened up, which I apparently didn't open up. There we go. Paste those in, remove the movement handler stuff because we don't need that. Give this a class underscore name of player idle state give it some signals what do we want the idle state to go into well we're going to want the idle state to go into the walk state so we'll go enter underscore walk underscore state we're going to want it to go into the so signal over there, enter the jump state so enter jump underscore state if you do a shot every time i say the word state don't you'll die there's a lot of states in this uh, video. And of course we need access to the func underscore physics process. There we go. So what are we going to want in here? Well, for our idle state, we're actually going to want our player entity dot movement handler dot handle deceleration. We're going to want to decelerate our player. So we're going to pull our player to a stop. Now we're going to want to make sure that that's happening and that our character comes to a full stop. We need to pass through the player entity and delta to get that to happen. And then we need to do some if checks again. So if player entity dot input handler dot handle the movement input does not equal a vector two dot zero. So we are actually doing something. We're pressing a button. We're trying to move. We can then go enter walk state and then emit that signal. And then once again, we can do an if check, not a fun check. There we go. If player entity dot input handler dot handle jump input is equal to true. Enter. There we go. 
enter underscore jump state dot emit. And this is both our walk and idle states done. Now, as I said before, you'll start to get into this kind of routine with these, this workflow of these, of how to set these up correctly. Always, I will always end up copying the ready enter and exit state from the idle function because the idle function has the base variety or base function of this. Now you might want to go, okay, what if I go and throw this in the base player state or player state in general? For some reason, doing that doesn't actually set the physics processes correctly. I don't know why. I actually have no no idea why setting physics process in a like in the not inherited version does that. Might be because of overloads. I, I don't know. Probably because of something to do with that, actually, now that I think about it. Anyway, with our state set up, we can now go into the player entity here and actually start messing around and testing our move states and stuff. So to do this, you might be tempted to hit Control Shift A to add your state machine, but that won't actually work. We actually need to use Control A. So just create new node for player entity. And in this, we actually want to call the, if we type in player state machine, you'll see here states and the player state machine all start appearing as new nodes. And these are all of base node types. And that's fine. We don't need no 2Ds for this, thankfully. So we're going to want the player state machine. We're going to go to the player entity uh, variable we have here and assign it to the player entity. And now to the player state machine specifically, we're going to hit control A and we're going to add the idle state. And then once more again, player state machine, control A, add the walk state. Player state machine's current state here can start off as the idle state. And that's it. Now we're going to need to do a little bit of changing in the uh, player entity here. First thing we're going to do is create a new function. And this one's going to be for handle underscore state underscore machine that's machine machine go underscore signals. You're probably thinking, Coffee Girl, why are you doing that? Well, this is a function that gets that, that does end up turning into a very long list. A very, very long list. And you don't want all of that in your ready function because it's kind of painful. I'm gonna write pass in here. Now we're going to do some fun little modifications that come with Godot 4.2, which makes things look much better. So I'm going to put some spaces between my Sprite 2D and my handlers. I'm then going to copy all of my handlers. I'm going to right click on them or highlight all of my handlers. I'm going to right click on all of them. And then I'm going to come down here to create code region. And then I'm going to call this region the handlers region there you go click away and now you see that we've got this lovely little folding menu for all of our regions once again just helps our code stay clean the only reason i didn't put the sprite in there is because technically the sprite isn't a handler so that's fine so now i'm going to write just some random garbled nonsense here I'm going to right click it again, create a code region. I'm going to call this one state machine region. There we go. I'll just do that. There we go. That looks good. Now I can just go through these, delete those two lines, and we now have our two regions set up that allow us to kind of easily see what's going on and keep things folded and just feel better. So we're going to want access to the player state machine. So we'll drag that into the region here. And then we'll typecast this as a player. I can't spell the word player. There we go. Player state machine. We'll grab our idle state as player idle state. And then we'll grab our walk state as player walk state. Now I can exit that. There you go have nice little foldable regions that are all handled nice and decently. We can even do that and make sure they're all pushed up close and nice together. Just feels good, looks good. Personal preference really, I guess. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. Now we need to start actually hooking up the logic for our player state machine. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do actually is go to our underscore ready function. The very first line in our ready function, we are going to want to call this handle state machine signals function 
to make sure that gets done immediately. Now we need to go through these signals and connect them together. And we'll start with the idle state because that's the state we're going to start in. So we're going to want to call the player idle state and then hit dot. And we're going to want to look for the enter walk state signal. Then we're going to want to connect it. What are we going to want to connect it to? Well, we're going to want to connect it to the player state machine dot change state function. Now, because we are using dot connect player state machine dot change state, what we're going to have to do here is do what's known as a binding. A binding is when we want to call a function within or I call a function as a parameter within another function, which is a bit confusing. But a bind allows us to pass in whatever our function is doing as parameters and kind of go from there. So we're going to want to go player state machine dot change state dot bind. Now you'll see here that it's change state dot bind, not change state parentheses dot bind, just change state dot bind parentheses like so. This allows us to actually start doing things correctly and changing the states correctly. So what are we going to want to bind to this? Well, we want to change into the walk state. So we're going to want to bind our player walk state like so. And this is pretty much the line that we're going to be using for every single one of our signal connections. So let's do this again. Let's go from the player walk state dot enter idle state dot connect to the player state machine dot change state dot bind player there we go, player idle state hit control s and save and we are now done so what we should be able to do here is actually go and remove the movement handler dot handle movement in our players physics process here. Hit control S and save. Close that region out, make it look good. Now I'm going to go into the 2D scene. I'm going to make sure that all of these things are set. I'm going to hit play and see if it breaks. Okay, it didn't break. And I can move around perfectly fine. And that is because the state machine is now actually playing correctly. Now one thing that I'm going to do here, now I, I don't entirely recommend this way of uh, kind of debugging this, but I want to show this off for now. In the next episode, as I said, we will go through and set up a proper debugging kind of window to make sure that things actually run fine. What I can do here is in my print statement, I can go print, grab the player state machine, and then dot current state, hit control S and save, and it'll tell me what state I'm currently in. So I'm in the player idle state, I'm in the walk state, idle state, walk state, and it's flicking back and forth between the two. Now, the reason why I say I don't recommend that is because it's printing, uh, well, in that short time, it prints, printed 600 messages to the console because it's in the physics process. We don't want that. But that shows us that our state machine's actually doing what it needs to do, and it's working. So what's the next thing we need to set up? There we go. I'm going to create a little space between these. Makes it a bit easier to uh, input more idle state things because we're going to need the player jump state as well. And that's probably what we're going to want to go into actually is the player jump state. So once again, player states, create new script, inherit from the player state uh, script, call this the player jump state script, hit create, go back to my idle state real quick, copy the ready enter and exit state functionality. Go and open up the player jump state, paste those in, go give it a class underscore name of player, capitalize that P, there we go, player underscore, not underscore jump state, there we go. So class name, player jump state. We want the func underscore physics process as well. Now we need to kind of decide the logic that we want to do in this. Well. First thing we're going to want to do is uh, under the enter state, we are going to want to make sure that we are handling our jump. So player entity dot jump handler dot handle jump pass through the player entity. And because this requires a true or false boolean for is jumping, we can just pass through true, sneakily pass through true like that. 
and that's our jump handler handled. We can now copy that line, paste that into our physics process. So we're doing that as well. Go and give this a signal real quick for entering the full state. So signal enter underscore full underscore state. And now we can do our if check to check if we are falling. So if the player entity dot velocity dot y is less than negative zero. Now, why are we doing negative zero? That is because negative is up in Godot. So if it's less than negative zero, which means if it's positive, I think. Is that how that works? Yes, I might be saying that wrong. Go check in a second. So we'll use the enter full state and emit that. That's our jump handled. And I'll start kind of breezing through these a little bit because the logic becomes one of those things that you just sit there and go, okay, what do I need to do? How does this need to leave the state? Well, I'm no longer jumping if I am falling, right? Okay, so I just need to check if my velocity is no longer going in the upward direction or the whatever the direction is for up in Godot, which is negative. So yeah, yeah. That's basically how the uh, logic ends up kind of being for a lot of these states is, do I need to go because X is now Y? Okay, fine. And speaking of X now being Y, let's go to the player full state. So let's go create one of those. In the player states folder, we're gonna hit a new script, inherit from player state, give it the script name of player full state. Uh, there we go, open that up. I forgot to copy my state logic here. Here we go. Give it a class underscore name of player full state. And we'll give it the exit signal for exit or enter, sorry. Now here is the uh, thing that you need to think about, right? If you're going from the full state, what state do you want to go into? It might be really easy for you to go, well, I'm more than likely going to be moving left or right. So what I'm going to want to go into is the walk state. You don't actually want to go in straight into the walk state. You're going to want to enter the idle state first. And that is because if you enter the idle state, you can then just, you know, if you let go of the keyboard, it'll go into the idle state. And then if you hold on to the keyboard, it will immediately go from idle to walk. And it will play some of the idle stuff that it needs to play or... It's basically just an easier transition from idle or to idle than it is to walk. I, I haven't really got much of an idea why. It just seems to function a little bit cleaner. So let's also give this access to the physics process. What are we going to want to do? Well, when we're falling, we are going to want to make sure that our player entities dot movement handler is still working because when we're falling, we're going to want to move in the air. So we're going to want to have access to the movement handler. So we can apply left or right movement. We're going to need to pass through the player entity, the player entity dot input handler dot handle movement. And we're going to want to pass through delta as well. And then finally, we are going to want to just check, and this is the, one of the easiest checks by far, is actually I'll let you pause the video and you can uh, see if you can check how we are you know if we have we can move out of the falling state if we can move into the idle state what's the check we need to do for that I'll give you a second now I will do it myself so what we will do is we'll check if the player entity dot is on floor variable is equal to true we are equal to true we want to enter the idle state via the signal remember we have access to everything that the player entity or the character body that is attached to the player entity has access to as well and that is our control S, our full state and jump state done so what we can do is go to the player state machine in our player uh, scene here we hit control a and add add the jump state once again, add the full state, hit control S, and we can go to our script and start changing our states and things like that. Now, what I want to make sure is I'm going to check here. Our idle state has access to the walk and jump. Our walk state has jump and idle, and our jump has access to the full, and full has access to idle.
So just keep those things in mind when you are doing this. You can add more signals so you can go into different states. Remember that. So to do this, we're going to go into the do, 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 player state machine. Not player state machine. We're going to go into the player entity region for our state machines. And we're going to start adding the jump and the fall. Typecast this as the jump player jump state there we go and typecast the other one as the player fall state draw s and save that's all of the states we need to do for now let's go down to our handle state machine signals for the player idle state we need to go and enter the jump state so enter jump state dot connect pass through the player state machine dot change state dot bind and then pass through the player jump state as the thing we want to enter. Walk state also needs to go into the jump state. So let's go player walk state dot enter jump state dot connect. Enter the player underscore do, 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 state machine dot change state dot bind player state are we going into again jump state there we go and then finally we want to do the player jump state dot enter full state dot connect pass through the player state machine dot change state dot bind yeah i'm repeating what i'm saying a lot i know but it's one of those things as i said you get into a flow with it and you just kind of start to uh we're going into full state there we go you kind of just start to get into this flow of it and i will end up repeating this a lot so you can kind of get used to the uh logic of it and used to typing it out yourself it's kind of like the thing in the simpsons where at the start of every episode bart simpson is writing out uh i will not do something in this case it's how to change to or change states in a state machine yeah kind of really start getting used to it it's got to the point for me now where i don't actually have my state machine logic or anything like that written down i just have it deeply ingrained into the crevices of my brain so the final one is the player full state dot enter idle state dot connect pass through the player state machine dot change state dot bind and we want to go into of course the player idle state not the player full state yeah player idle state control s and save and that is all of the signal connections for all of our states and state machines set up and sorted i am once again going to do a print statement for our player state machine dot current state not change state yeah, current state so we can just get a good look down here in the uh, output to see what's happening as of right now we are in idle we are now in walk jump into full jump into full jump into full you'll see that what we we'll do is click jump and there you go one jump state frame now i'm going to very quickly check something because as i said this is the logic that is uh a little bit confusing to me shouldn't make much of a difference but we will test Okay, there we go. It needs to be greater than zero when we're falling. Okay, there we go. So just a triple check, make sure. Go to your player jump state. The player entity dot velocity dot y needs to be greater than zero for us to be falling. I always get confused about that. I don't know why. I've never really ingrained that one too much. But you'll see here, whilst we're moving up, we are jumping. And whilst we're moving down, we are falling. And now if I go and fall off of a ledge, we enter the idle state. And that is because we are not entering the jump state from the walk state. And that is because of this. Now, this is where I was saying, hey, do you want a signal to enter the jump state? You could check if your velocity is greater than or your y velocity is greater than or less than or just not equal to zero. Or you could have a third signal. So signal enter underscore full underscore state. You have a third signal for checking if you're going or if you're walking into a like a hole and you're falling. Now, reason why I said you don't need to do that is because 
you could just have jump state and then just check if your jump velocity or your velocity dot y is not equal to zero that means you're either falling or jumping depends but in this case we will create a uh, third if check here for if player entity dot velocity velocity there we go velocity dot y is greater than zero emit the full state enter full state dot emit there we go I'm failing at typing there we go and with that one being emitted we can now go back into our player entity on the walk state here you'll notice that I like to keep these grouped right so I'll create a new line right here just below the player walk state and I can go player walk state dot enter the full state dot connect pass through the player state machine dot change state dot bind and then we'll pass through the player full state hit control s and you'll see here this is actually why I said to create this function because I can collapse this and not think about it now but if I ever want to know how this is functioning I can hold down control and left click on that function it'll take me to it and it'll keep this really big list of things just at the bottom of the script out of the way it's really nice now let's try this one more time by walking off of a ledge there you go we immediately entered the full state and then we landed onto the idle state Now you'll know that I don't have, or you'll notice that I don't have a into full state here. That's because I don't plan on having like disappearing floor or platforms or anything like that. I don't have anything that can push the character, and I don't plan on having anything that can put that player into that state in any way. Now you can add the redundancy check of having a full state thing just in case, but we don't need it. It's not going to be necessary in any way because I don't plan on adding uh, falling platforms or disappearing floor. If I change my mind, then it's an easy thing to fix. We can just go back and add it, but we don't need to that is actually the entire player state machine handled now some things that we can do here real quick is we can move the jump handler from our physics process we're always going to want move and slide and we're always going to want the flip handler we can remove the print statement here and we're always going to want the gravity handler and now you'll see that our player script like the, our actual player script it's just references it's just references to the like on ready references to the nodes the state machine it's just applying gravity and move and slide and uh that yeah that's that's it technically speaking you don't even need to have these in here you don't need to really even use the physics process of the player entity at all it can just be a master reference script for your state machines and all that stuff but because that is goes into a bit more of like a free factory thing we won't do that in this video in the next video we'll either hand we'll we'll handle some refactors but we'll mostly be adding some animations and we'll be setting up some debugging text windows and things like that for us in the future. But for now, that is pretty much everything we need and everything we're done with. So what I'm going to say is thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I hope this has helped you. Please, 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 please make sure to leave a comment or something ask if you need help state machines can get very confusing until they kind of click for you and if this doesn't click for you immediately ask some questions if you need to but yeah uh, i hope you've enjoyed i hope you're having a great great game dev journey and i hope you're having an amazing day and i'll see you in the next video